and I think we are ready to get started. So, I think, uh, yeah. Hey, Tim, how's it going? I'm doing great. How are you? Yeah, doing all right. So, uh, when you're ready, right. take it away so, and let me know I'll, when time starts. I will count you in. So the timer will start just before chapter one pops up on screen, but I'll give you as close of a countdown as I possibly can. Goody. So three, two, one, go. All right, so, Evil Within 2, uh, as family-friendly as Pokemon that we just saw, I would say. Um, not, not as colourful, but family-friendly still. Uh, the first part, the house is, is really not a lot going on, it's just hold W to video game. Um, there's a couple of tiny little time saves that I will mention, but outside of that, we're just, we're just going around the house, there's not a whole lot there. Uh, camera can get a bit weird here after you gain control of Sebastian, so we're just going to hold one input Just until we gain control of him um, If you move the camera too soon, it'll do like a big 360 spin and put you in some random position and it's absolutely, absolutely awful So the first little time skip is coming up to this staircase We're gonna crouch and uncrouch immediately and that will stop Sebastian from stopping at the stairs being like hey, what's going on? Just like that, and then the next little time save is after we get past this uh, bit of debris here, we're going to start mashing the E key to try and get an early door, and you'll see Sebastian slide when I do that. Just like that. Okay. Now we've got a little bit of time here, you can't skip this just yet, so I'm going to try and explain what the hell's going on um, in that time. So. 2012, I believe. Sebastian and his wife lose their daughter in a house fire, which is that whole sort of nightmare section we just saw then. Uh, Sebastian's wife goes, mm, hang on a minute, that does not sound right. She starts investigating things. She, she disappears. And then, I think maybe a year or two later, Sebastian gets the call for the Beacon Hospital, which is the first game. Finds himself in STEM, which is kind of like Spooky Matrix, where everyone shares a consciousness, and it's all sort of held stable by one core which they worked out the best possible candidates for the core are either a psychopath, Rubik from the first one, or a child. The, we find out that Sebastian's daughter didn't die. It was set up by Mobius because she was the perfect candidate for the core, and she's gone missing in this particular version of STEM. And because their search team has gone missing and they can't find our daughter Lily, they're like, hey, Sebastian was the protagonist of the first game. Let's get him back for this one. So that's how we get into the new and improved STEM. Now we've got this little intro section where they're just going to make us watch some credits. Um, and there's another little time skip here. There's going to be three things that sort of blind Sebastian. The first two, unavoidable, but the third one we can skip just by a sneaky little uh, camera manipulation. Um, if there's any quick donations or anything you want to read while this is happening, you're more than welcome to. Well, I'll just continue... Um describing who we are and what we're doing. Go so, for it. Um, if you want to donate, head to donate.osbruns.com and I think the link was in the chat just recently. And to tell you a bit more about um, Cure Cancer, so they fund early career cancer researchers who work across all cancers and all areas of cancer research. Um, we also have a number of incentives for uh, enhancing our speedrun marathon. And the next one will be, I believe, after this run, um, if you would like to force the runner to use motion controls during Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020, then you can contribute towards that. We are $95 towards a $500 goal. Okay, so now we've just, we've entered Sebastian's office in STEM, which is kind of like the safe room, the safe hub kind of thing, which is where you would normally go to upgrade your abilities, upgrade your weapons and stuff like that. Because it's new game casual, we don't need to do that. So there's only going to be a couple of points in the game where we actually need to go, go in here. Um, cats in chat, please. 
Let me see the return of the mirrors. The mirrors are kind of like the, the warp point between safe houses and stuff like that. And it's like basically their way of going, how do we put these really wild and crazy sections together and have it make some semblance of sense? And that is go through the magic mirror. But we don't use them all that often either in this particular run. Okay, let's give another little cutscene. Now we're coming up to our first of three uh, major pieces of movement tech, which is called stutter stepping. Sebastian's base stamina in this game is rubbish, and he can only sprint for about three or four seconds before he completely loses stamina. So we're going to sprint on and off. We're just going to tap it in as best of a rhythm as we can. And what that's going to do is it's going to refill our stamina ever so slightly every time we release that sprint button. We just, try, we just use that just to get a little bit more out of, out of Sebastian's stamina. And it's as fast as holding down the sprint. Because as you notice, he, he still has a little bit of a... like He kind of slows a little bit when we release it, but he doesn't come to a complete stop. So we're able to get as much out of him as possible. And the other two I'll, uh, I'll sort of talk about when we get to them. But at the moment, we're just going around this, this creepy building. Because, you know, horror games. And then we come across our first Mobius team member who has gone missing. And uh, boy, has he gone missing. What the hell? If you actually look up to the right there, um, you'll see the first antagonist. He just kind of disappears. Doing this little slide here. Our stamina is going to refill in this section. Some parts... We interact with items, the stamina will refill. Other times it won't. This is one of those times, so we just let it do its thing. Now we're coming up to stairs. Stairs are kind of uh, annoying. Much like in Resident Evil, like we, we do have to sort of do a version of stair skating. Um, so we want to make sure we've got as much stamina as possible going up these stairs. So we'll slow down about here to let some, re you know, some stamina refill. Drop it again as we're going around these corners, just to let as much refill as possible. So the last thing you want is to run out of stamina going up the stairs and have Sebastian like, just snail's pace. It's the absolute worst. I'm going through this inviting door. It's just welcoming. Now we're gonna come across Stefano, who is the first antagonist. This is also where we get introduced to the cover system, which is the second bit of movement tech. Uh, if a triangle pops up, a little arrow pops up on any piece of geometry in this game, you can cover to it. The benefit of that is we can just ping pong off anything. And Spano won't see us, he's blind. So the first instance here, after he teleports, you'll see this little arrow and we just cover to here. Now we get, as he moves as fast, but he does, his takeoff is slightly faster still, so um, it's a little bit faster to move around, and the benefit of that is stamina refills when using cover to cover. So we're going to use that one as much as possible. Just bounce off every possible wall we can. If you have a moment, I've got a donation. Go yeah. for it. Alright, we have a hundred dollars from Harlan. He says, good luck on the run, Tim. I can't believe this is your first time ever playing Evil Within. <laughs> yes, no spoilers, spoiler. please. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, no, no, but but the donation comment has a spoiler right in it. <gasps> um, <laughs> spoiler, Sebastian is in the Matrix. Shocking, I know. All right, that's it. I'm out, guys. See you later. That was great. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Harlan. Um, we're rooting for you in America, so make your buddies across the world proud. Donation goes to Runner's Choice. So Runner's Choice. Um, yeah. What's the Zelda run at? The no SRM defeat Ganon. Uh, it's definitely a ways away. It is at 60 out of 1,000. All right, put it towards that. Yeah. All right, so up here, we're going to have this little like Silent Hill type section where the room just keeps changing. We're going to listen for some audio cues here. Bang, bit of cloth. Bang, more cloth, and the room just keeps changing. And now we're going to get a very, very lovely picture taken by Stefano. And, oh, look, the room changed again. And coming up now is the first instance of a monster called the Guardian. And she's very happy. 
very happy. Now this section here, they make it seem like it's like dire and you really need to just, just get a move on. But the game actually gives you far more stamina than you need. Just for this section specifically. You know, the, the music's all like tense and Sebastian's all like worrying and he's, he's checking behind him. But you watch my stamina bar, it's barely moving. Even on like classic and Akumu modes where everything drains like faster, it you got plenty. And this door here is another instance where the camera can just really mess you up. So you just take your hand off the mouse, bang, we're done. And now we're going to go up into this vent. Now the Guardian's going to try and say hi by putting her saw blade through the, the, the vent while we're walking. And what that's going to do is cause an animation with Sebastian where he kind of leaps backwards and it's like, oh, scary. So we're going to walk backwards in a moment and walking backwards will cause that same animation to happen but will push us forward to where we need to go saving just a little bit more time something happens with Sebastian's hitbox completely and the blade just does nothing so abuse it spin around coming up is the first instance where I'm going to be using both the controller and the keyboard. Uh, unfortunately, this game doesn't allow you to bind multiple keys to one action, so uh, I use the A button on the controller to just help get through mashing sections. Now, the Guardian's going to give us her best uh, Kool Aid Man impression right here. And we're just going to leg it. Now, I'm not actually sure if, like, blasting double inputs actually helps, but it could be a placebo effect, and other runners do it, so why not me? This is that point where the game's going to start opening up. Um, this is basically the intro how to play kind of section. Uh, it kind of introduces us to the, the protagonist and the antagonist, I should say. Um... And in just a moment, we're going to learn what our third movement tech is. Um, it's a bit more situational than the other two. Um, notably when in combat. So, we'll pick up this, uh, this syringe here. Sebastian's juicing. World's worst detective finds gun hidden under book. Wouldn't the world's worst effective not find the gun? Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah, can't can't find his daughter, but he can find a gun. <laughs> well, maybe that maybe that's the bar you need to meet to be a detective. If you can't find the. I mean, in the in the United <laughs> States, maybe Keck W. <laughs> oh gosh. <clears throat> <laughs> All right. So, uh, we don't care about what he's saying. Um, he's basically just saying, "Hey, where's Lily? I'm gonna find Lily." Skip it call with Kidman and now that we have a weapon we're going to do what's called uh, aim running I guess it doesn't really have a name but when you're in combat Sebastian's stamina drains three times faster and regenerates three times slower which makes sections really really frustrating to deal with so in a moment we're gonna encounter a, a monster called the lost which are just your, your standard run-of-the-mill zombies in this game um, but Sebastian's gonna be his his stealth his uh, stamina sorry just gonna be draining. So we're gonna we're gonna tap in a rhythmic pattern just to uh, just to conserve stamina because with the aim running, you actually have a maybe a second where stamina doesn't actually drain like it kind of pauses for a second. Um, it's a little bit slower than using cover to cover and the stutter stepping, but in the situation that we're in, it's like ideal. If we stand too far to the right here, Sebastian will come to a slow walk and just appreciate that union sign, but we don't want that. We want to go fast. Healing will also refill stamina. So there are certain areas where I'll just heal randomly and that's just to refill stamina. Let's get 
this cutscene, and we're going to go into that house. That looks like a nice house. Okay. And I'm going to pick up a bottle here. Normally I wouldn't in a PB attempt, but, you know, marathon. Now, on casual, uh, having a bottle in your inventory will give you the ability of, when getting grabbed, Sebastian will automatically use the bottle to break free from that grab, which is a upgrade in any other difficulty. So it comes in handy when uh, in certain tight areas that you might need a bit of backup. So I'll, I pick up a couple of bottles throughout this route just for just for safety measures. Okay. Fun fact: if you get hit in this game, the auto splitter will actually pause for three seconds. This cutscene skip is RNG. I got the good RNG. So you can either skip it immediately or it's like 15 seconds into the cutscene. Very weird. Um, this is O'Neill. He's a real jerk. We don't like O'Neill. He's, uh, he's a bit of a coward. He just left his mates to die. Um, at the moment, he's just telling us about uh, these resonance signal things, basically like stem memories. Um, and he's, he's hearing these weird sounds, which is quite obviously Lily. And sends us out to go investigate it, because, you know, he's a chicken and doesn't want to do it himself. We activate this workbench. Uh, the workbench is for crafting ammunition, upgrading guns, etc., etc. Um, we're not going to use this workbench, though. We activate that so that we can do field crafting. If we don't activate that, we can't actually craft ammunition in the field. So that makes things really, really difficult. So... I don't understand why they didn't give it to us right off the bat, but it was the dev's choice. That was the first and only time we see Tatiana, by the way, who was from the first game. Because we don't need to upgrade any any of Sebastian's abilities. And now it's going to make us look at this resonance signal. So we're just going to very quickly lock onto it, and then we know where we're going. So we don't need to, uh, to listen to it. Dang. Now it doesn't matter what way I go here, it's going to cause a, um, a cutscene anyway. So, <clears throat> and that'll just put Sebastian where we need him to be. Uh, this will be the first instance of where all three movement tech is sort of used. I gotta try to find that signal. So we're gonna try and cover under this park bench which we got. Yeah. Sometimes the uh, cover points don't actually appear, like that one. That one didn't show up. But as you can see, we're just gonna try and abuse this cover system as much as possible. At this point is where we start the side of step. There is a glitch coming up that I hope I do not get. Otherwise, I'll have to reload. Because um, it's a soft lock. And that's always, you know, fun. Um, if you got anything you want to, like, talk about, now's probably a good time. Well, I think uh, we've uh, cleared out the backlog on Dono. So mm -hmm. if you're listening and you want to uh, provide some for this airtime, then you should provide uh, us with some content. So head over to donate.allspeedruns.com and uh, yeah, we'll happily read out your donors uh, in favour of a good cause. There are some parts late game where we have a lot of downtime, so please do. Um, so at the moment here, we're trying not to be seen by these monsters. Um, if we were to go a bit too far to the right, that first guy getting up probably would have seen us, which meant he would have alerted all the other guys. So we didn't get that happen, so that's great. Doing some aim running here to, to try and get that last little bit out of him. <clears throat> and so now we're just playing hide and seek with Lily's uh, memories here. There's uh, three or f no, four, I think, that we actually have to look at. Door's locked. Questioning how do we get in? There's obvious this obvious light coming from the ground. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. World's best detective, everyone. <clears throat> you can get a glitch here. I'm not sure what triggers it, but basically the glitch um, stops an animation of Sebastian picking up the doll. Um, which I didn't get, thankfully. I've been getting that in, in practice. Because it's, it's banned in the in this category. It's a, it's a major skip, so we can't really get it, you know. Um, 
But yeah, it's really funny. Like the doll will just kind of levitate whilst about. You've still got full control of Sebastian and can pretty much go anywhere. Okay, now we're going to check out the back. Pick up. We're going to start picking up some resources here too. So we need like gunpowders and fuses and stuff. Okay, we didn't get the glitch, thankfully. The glitch would launch you over a fence, which puts you out of bounds, and there's no way to get back in. So if that had happened, like it launches you over that fence there. So if that had happened, that would have been like real bad. Again, he's just going to be checking his uh, his little communicator here for resonances. It's going to tell us where we need to go, but we know what we're doing. This this isn't our first rodeo. I'm just going to cover to cover off these things. Are there any incentives you want to talk about? Because this this whole chapter is a bit like a lot of downtime, you know. I will just quickly run down the whole list of incentives. <laughs> we can fill up that time nicely. Okay. So coming up soon, uh, in a couple of runs time, there'll be Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. Tokyo 2020, um, which we are trying to raise enough to force the runner to play using motion controls. Uh, after that, Jack and Dexter, the Precursor Legacy. Um, there's an incentive to play in Japanese. We have $550 left towards that incentive. There is Peter Jackson's King Kong, the official game of the movie, where we decide whether to kill or save Kong. Or, um, there is Super Mario World. Uh, I think the ca there's a incentive to do a bonus race for a category which is called Inner Six. So uh, that that should be fun. And I think they were saying this is the first time it's going to appear in a speedrun marathon potentially. Oh. So could be fun. We're $670 left on that one. And uh, we have an incentive to name both of the pilots in the Fire Emblem Three Houses race. Uh, we have no names submitted for that, so if you would like to get some names ahead, then now's the time to. Uh, I think just we get know. I think started. we know what name we should all be voting for. <laughs> Hector. <laughs> Hector for one and Tina for the other, right? Definitely, one hundred percent. We've got a language choice for a Super Monkey Ball, so you can choose between Italian, German, and English. There's also the monkey. Monkey choice. You can choose between Baby, Gon Gon, Mimi, and Ai Ai. Uh, we can unlock Rescuing Cindy in River City Ransom. We can choose to save or harvest the little sister in Bioshock. We can decide on the file name in Code Lyoko. And finally, we have the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Uh, it is a bonus game to unlock um, a no SRM race to defeat Ganon. So yeah, lots of stuff to potentially make our marathon even greater. And uh, it does look like we have a dono that has come through. Yeah, you can read that. Go for it. Cool. Uh, so we have $10 from Silver Fox Alpha. Hey. He says, for my grouse mate, Tim Trollgasm, the greatest Aussie I've ever known. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Good so luck with the run. All for a great cause. Thanks, mate. Runner's choice. So... Runner's choice. Put that towards the uh, motion controls. Yep. Right, so I got a pretty. We'll do. Yep. That shot's a bit harder than it looks. Okay. This is a the first instance. Wow. Rude. First instance where the um the bottle comes in handy as you just saw. Um, the monsters can actually hit you in that cutscene, so you can actually be like slapped to death while being un unable to control Sebastian. Uh, it's happened before. Okay. So we're gonna cover to cover here. <clears throat> This is uh, another little time skip coming up here. Very little one, which I actually learned about a week ago. Um, turns out it's been a thing the whole time. I didn't know. But basically, we just want to uh, cover to cover to as much as possible. A few things fallen from the ceiling. For someone that has been a detective and survived first stems, Sebastian is very easily startled. Okay, this guy can block you sometimes, but he's good. 
sometimes you just kick those boxes right in front of you and you can't you can't move and it's quite frustrating i'm gonna pick up some safety items here just for for later on in the run that i normally wouldn't do if i was pb attempts just slow so pick up this syringe we're gonna pick up this shock bolt they come very handy they're the buy they're the buy me some time bolts which you'll find out later so i'm gonna pick up this shotgun after we finish this animation, we're going to immediately look at the ceiling, and that's going to stop a little dialogue thing with Sebastian. He'll stop and he'll be like, another doll, but where's Lily? And we don't want that. So we're just going to pick the doll up right away, and then it's going to play another little cutscene, and then we're going to leave. Okay. Now, coming up here is a little trick that was banned in No Major Skits for a long time, and I'm not sure why it was unbanned by the time I started running it. But basically, dropping down ladders, and this one's a bit harder than the other one in the, in, later in the run because uh, we're using our communicator at the time. Movement when in a in a call is just really janky because it was just the camera's just all over the shop. So basically, we need to be running at full speed um, to be able to drop down here, which I got. Um, if you hit it at a weird angle and you're not at full speed, Sebastian will just kind of get caught on the ledge. Um, so just some weird little quirk that the game's got, but yeah, that was banned for the longest time. Now we get some more Silent Hill type gameplay where everything's changing. There's only one cover point in this part too, so we have to manage our stamina as best we can. That's this point here. I am going to heal now though, because coming up is a part that if you make a little mistake can cost you big time. So. I want to be making sure I've got enough health to uh, do that. If we look away from the door, Sebastian won't slow down because usually we'll just kind of come to a slow walk and walk behind Stefano here. But if we look away, he just goes full tilt. <clears throat> and now he's going to spawn what are called spawns. And they're just uh, mildly aggressive cat dogs. And they deal a lot of damage. So we need to get our cover to covers like pretty well on point to not get hit here. First one, second one. Okay, now this is a bit of a janky setup too. All right. Okay, so we did get hit once, but that's fine. I'd rather one hit than like six, which is how. If you miss that first cover to cover, they they're on you. They're all over you, and you you'd be dying before you know it. Okay, I'm gonna try not to get hit because they can come out here and really ruin your day. All right, we're good. Now coming up, we're going to try and play it a bit safe. There's a, a creature called the Lament, which you're going to see in just a moment. And they have this nasty little thing where they'll scream, and it drains your stamina completely. But when she screams, she also alerts every zombie in the vicinity. And that's bad. We don't want that. Um, so we're going to take it a little bit safe, and hope that no one sees us. Uh, just because it's... you could, It's another area where like a little mistake could, can cost you your life. And it's... Uh, not worth dealing with. I will say though, any death in this run, I'm going to donate five dollars, with the exception of one specific boss fight. If I die in that boss fight, I'm going to donate twenty because um, it's punishment for myself. Cover, cover to this. I said cover to cover to this. And this one. Now we're going to pick up the crossbow, which is like the most OP weapon of the game, next to the magnum, which we don't actually use in this run. So anyone that's played the first one will probably remember how uh, how good that crossbow is. I'm just gonna play this little cutscene. It's like, like, hey, you just picked up a crossbow with a shock bolt. I wonder what water does. But we're gonna ignore that completely. And the worst RNG in this is getting the lament to spot you on the way back, because on the way back, uh, the the enemies will just swarm you way quicker. And it's a lot harder to get back to where we go. So we're going back to that safe house that had O'Neill in it before. And he's going to say, good job. Now I need you to go through a tunnel. Here's a gas mask. It's totally brand new and not just, you know, wiped out with a bit of paper towel. Still refusing to do his own work, by the way. Okay, 
I'm going to pick up some resources over here. Now we're basically going to be heading in a similar path to where we were before to get to the next area. Um, he's kind of told us about this thing called the Marrow, which is like the inner workings of STEM, which is supposed to be like a, like a set of interconnected computer systems as a safe way to travel between areas. Um, which we soon find out that that is very much not the case. Um, so yeah, we're just going to try and do this as best we can. We need as much stamina as possible leading up to a certain part of this, this run here because we get some spawns drop in and as I've just mentioned, they're pretty bad. Here he is, so we're gonna like do a bit of a tap, run a few steps, tap a bit more just to try and get as far away from him as possible. And you'll notice he's just seen me, but we should be far enough ahead of him now that it won't matter. And now we get to do a really fun shot here to try and uh, not deal with the lament at all. Uh, there's a chance of missing this, but all right, that should be fine. Now what that's done, that little circuit pad there, um, if you shoot a shock bolt, it like shorts it out and, and opens the locked door, which we're going to do again in just a moment. I'm going to make sure I pick up this smoke bolt here. I forgot that in a run yesterday, or the day before. And the smoke bolts are pretty good. They're also buy me time bolts. Okay. High tech gear. Uh, you know, Apple computers from the 80s. Okay. We have a very, very precise shot coming up. Um, I'm not sure exactly how precise, but I know that some days it's first try, other days it's like fifth try. So what the game wants us to do, essentially, is go around to the right, through this path, and... Um, go through a, a tunnel system through there but we don't want to do that we're just going to try and line this shot up i didn't get it first try because there's a little shock like a, a, a um what are they called the electrical pad there there we go and if you're shooting it under the door we just forego having to go through that whole lengthy section of uh going around the side and coming through that there and now we get a little bit of a chaotic bit first real combat of the game Take him out. Take him out. Take this guy out for safety because sometimes he can be in the way. Okay. Now this is a little skip here. This is similar to those um, puzzles in RE2. I'm going to wait till that... Nope, I missed it. So if you stand in a different... Like if you crouch and look at a different certain angle, it skips this dialogue. Um, you would have noticed that it was switching between a magnifying glass and a hand. We want it, we want the hand, but I um, Sebastian moved a little bit as I hit the input, so we missed that, but that's alright. Um, now we've just got a little section here where we're going to kill as many people as possible. Hey, mate. There is a strat. The old strat used to be just chill out on the ladder until the, the door opens, but that's slower. Okay. Now we've got... A hysteric. Hysterics are quite violent. They will mess you up if you let them. So we're going to try and mess her up first. Okay, we didn't get the one shot. We got a two shot. That's pretty good though. Um, if you miss any of those shots, she's on you and she just does not let up. So that wasn't a bad section there. You have a quick donor or anything? Now's a good chance. Yeah, I've got a, a donation from Alexandra Lynn for $20 saying, Let's go Tim, you're killing it. Yeah, thanks Lexi. We're killing quite a few things, I think. Yeah. Okay, another shot that's harder than it looks. Uh, you'll see me, like, tapping aim going down some staircases, and that's similar to the stair skating in um, Resident Evil, because Sebastian just sort of runs a bit weirder going down the stairs, so if you do that little um, aiming down sights, he, uh, he just gets down there a little bit quicker, because, his, again, his initial takeoff speed is a bit faster. Um, ladders are difficult, apparently. And so now we're coming up to a section. It's the only first-person section of the game. 
and it makes things a little bit wonky. Um, but because there's gas, it's like highly flammable, we can't use any weapons. Um, and there's a lament hanging around down there. So we're going to pick up a bottle and we're going to abuse the cover to cover as much as we can to try and not get grabbed by her. Because we will, we will be safe because we have the bottle. But if we didn't have a bottle, her grabbing us is an insta kill. She like just grabs hold of you and just spews like acid on you or something and just melt your face off. And it's really gruesome. Um, totally family friendly game. So gonna try and not get seen by her, which didn't work. But if you notice doing the cover to covers, he kind of like ducks a little bit and lunges forward. And we're gonna, we're gonna use that to try and avoid the, uh, the laments grab here in a moment. Pick this bottle up for safety. I said pick this bottle up for safety. Thank you, Sebastian. Inputs are hard. So here she's gonna see us. She's gonna scream. We're gonna try and cover to here. We're gonna hit every cover point we can. Okay, and now we've got this little fuse box puzzle, which is the same as the um, second one in Resident Evil 2. And now we're going to try... Yeah. Okay, so I got stuck there, but luckily she didn't grab me. There have been runs where I've gotten stuck on that same box and she's kind of grabbed me, but that's okay, we survived. Gonna do a little bit more stair skating going up here. I almost missed that. Uh, that vent system always seems to be the one that I forget exists, and so I'll just come charging through that door, run to the end of the room, and go, Oh, hang on a minute, what am I doing? and then realize that, yeah, vents. So we're about to enter the marrow again, which will take us to City Hall where we're going to be greeted by uh, another one of those really, really friendly and not dangerous at all guardians that we encountered in chapter two. But we have a strat. Here it is. My way back is easy. Okay. Make sure I'm all reloaded with what I need. Yeah, we're good. There's two achievements with this section too, which you can actually do in the one playthrough. You can set up a save in this next room that we're going to be in. Then the two achievements, one is to kill the Guardian, which takes a lot of firepower and a lot of panicking. Or there's... You don't kill the Guardian, which just involves a lot of panicking. Um, we're going to go for the latter. We're not going to kill her at all. We're going to say hi and then bye and just gun it. This will also be the first instance of the Arbiter, which is like this weird uh, Lovecrafty and camera lens type monster that kind of just watches us. There's Stefano being Stefano. There he is. Look at that. Beautiful. So these corpses on the ground are all going... We're going to skip it, but all these corpses on the ground are going to just kind of... become the Guardian. It's, uh, it's a very cool cutscene, but uh, cutscenes are slow. We're just going to leg it to this little chain link fence here. I'm going to leg it to this wall. And around the side here, we want to try and first shot these barrels. Uh, that can be quite, uh, 
quite painful if we don't. I'll try and cover to cover off these as much as possible, as quick as possible. Now there's another... Okay. Now we're going to pick up the first instance of explosive bolts. They're very handy later on. I'll shoot this shock bot on the ground. This is a buy me the first instance of buy me time. It's going to shock her and keep her in place long enough for us to mash through this door. Easy clap. And then that's the last time we see a guardian. Uh, I was saying in practice earlier that that never happens. Usually I get hit going through that door. That's twice today. Okay, now uh, Harrison here is going to tell us about the stable field emitter, which I'm going to be honest with you, I've skipped the cutscenes so much that I don't actually remember what it does. I think it's supposed to keep the monsters and at bay and like the, the world from falling apart or something. I can't remember. Um, basically, he wants us to turn it on though. So we're gonna we're gonna honor his dying wish and do that for him. Pick up these shotgun shells for safety. There's a marathon. And now this section gets a bit like wild in that not a whole lot goes on, but it's really like trippy. Lots of like room changing and all that fun stuff. That's obscure, by the way. A neat little puzzle here, um, and by neat, I mean it's very simple. Basically, we just need to get the uh, the roses and the necklace, put it on the mannequin, spin the mannequin around, and take a photo of it, and it's gonna turn that backdrop into an actual corridor. You can actually try and like quit out of this too quickly. I've done that before and it didn't actually take the photo and I was very confused as to what the hell is going on. Um, <clears throat> let's go look at these paintings, all these photographs I suppose as we run past down the corridor. And that's gonna activate this. And there's a little glitch coming up. I'm not sure what triggers it, but we can actually get something to trigger earlier by picking up this file that's on the desk over there. That click, that, that um, camera shutter means that we got the glitch. Usually you would have to run like three quarters up this corridor here for it to trigger, but for some reason picking up that file in that, that spot just causes it to happen. <clears throat> and this is a room where we gotta do some laps. We gotta go up here, down here, and then back up again, and then Stefana will start talking about, you know, whatever. And then we kind of just wait until the door opens. So we've got, I don't know, 30 seconds, 20 seconds of just time to do some squats, I suppose. Or we can read out uh, a little bit about who we are and what yeah, we're doing. So it. we are on speed runs. We're a group doing speed run events to raise money for charity. For this event, we're raising money for Cure Cancer, a charity which funds early career cancer researchers working across all cancers and all areas of cancer research. If you want to donate, uh, if you want to donate, you can go to donate.ozspeedruns.com. And don't forget, we do have incentives uh, that can be attached to your donation so that we can enhance your marathon viewing experience. Okay, so what I just did there was uh, I shot at Stefano, and that caused the doors to close early. Normally, you'd have to run a bit further up, and then he sort of laughs and he sh shuts the door. But if you shoot, he does it sooner. And then in this little section here, Sebastian's walking speed is going to decrease, decrease rather a lot. So we're just going to look away from the intended uh, thing, and Sebastian will just walk at normal speed. Normal speed, just a nice little camera manipulation there. Um, the alternative is to tap like left and right, like strafing. Uh, again, thank you. <clears throat> 
then it's going to uh, mess with us a little bit. Obscura is going to get in our face. There's going to be a little bit coming up very soon where if there's anything else you want to read out, we've got like a minute, maybe even more. Um, so I'll let you know when that's coming, but it's like within the minute. Um, Alright guys, well you heard it, get your donors in really quickly. Okay, so we're coming up on Obscura, and Obscura is going to try and shut this uh, emitter off. So we want to keep her focus on us as long as possible. But we can't kill her, and we don't want to waste the, waste the resources to keep her at bay. So for about a minute, 70 seconds I think, we're going to just, there you go, 90 seconds even, we're going to tank hits. It is the most cooked strat I've ever seen in a speedrun but it's the only thing we can do. So she's going to run around this corner. We're going to stun her. Um, and then just, just keep her on us. Just keep her attention on us. So if you have anything you want to read out or talk about, now is your chance. I do want to point out that there was a lot of support in the chat for Hector. However, I'm not seeing the donors coming through to uh, support that. Um, level of enthusiasm so maybe if we do want to name everything Hector we <laughs> get started. That's it, yep. So yeah, she's just gonna we're just gonna back her into this corner here and, and uh, just keep taking his that she can't kill us because of how fast our health regenerates and how long it takes her to attack. So the it just kinda evens out. Um, but yeah if there's anything else you need to talk about we've we've still got almost a minute. It's wild. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, and just a reminder that, yeah, donations of $10 and above will put you in the draw for a few prizes. Uh, you can check out the pri li prize list. The link has just appeared in the chat. Or just uh, for uh, streamtember.ozspeedruns.com. And uh, I'm look I'm hoping maybe I can get some of those cool light panels because it's the sort of thing that I wouldn't, like, oh, I kind of want them, but I can't quite justify buying them straight <laughs> up. But, uh, yeah. But uh, if I were to win them, I would be happy. Okay, so once we hit four seconds here, we can run off, and she will focus on us. She won't worry about the emitter. And that just allows us to pick up this health syringe. And that's Obscura. We do see her once once more later in the run. Now she's headbanging. She must be listening to Slayer. So now the stable field emitter's uh, up and running. It's doing whatever it was intended to do, which, uh, as I said, I don't remember. I'm just going to wait for this door to open. So yeah, we've basically just learned that uh, Lily's not here. So we're still we're still on the lookout for Lily. Um, so we're talking to Kidman, going, hey, what's going on? Some more resources there because it's going to come in handy um, a little bit later on. Not just yet, though. <clears throat> this is another instance where the camera gets a bit wonky because we're going to be sprinting in a um, phone call. So I'm going to try and line up Sebastian as best I can, but it is a bit hard. Um, he kind of just runs in like a weird 45 degree angle. It's, it is faster than just like walking, but. Yeah, it's, uh... Yeah, see, it's kind of at that weird angle there. We want to go this way. And coming up next is the uh, second ladder skip, which can be kind of hard. Um, I've lost 30 seconds in runs just by trying to get ladder skip, which at that point is just faster to just climb down the ladder normal. So, there's that. Okay, see what I mean? Like, you kind of... Is that that weird angle there? And he just didn't... There we go. Second try is as good as first. <clears throat> it's 
It's going back through the marrow, and it's going to one of the gates that we passed just before, which you can actually skip in any percent, but we're not doing any percent. Um, is going to open up, and that's going to lead us to the next area of the marrow. This is, uh, I think this is my uh, chat's favourite part of the game. Coming up. This is like the perfect instance of um, stair skating too, because we got a whole bunch of flights of stairs that we've got to run down and Sebastian's stamina just does not hold out if you don't do the stair skating. So... Also doesn't help that these monsters are most likely going to see us, yep. So, yeah, so if you're playing this... Oh, sorry. You go. Yeah, no, if you're playing this casually and uh, you're trying to do all this running and you're running out of stamina, is, is it intended that you're actually taking combats or stuff? Like... Um, you can stealth kill. But it's it's a bit yikes sometimes. But you can actually upgrade Sebastian's stamina. When you kill enemies, um, you pick up this green goo, which is used to um, used to upgrade just certain things of Sebastian. Uh, but because it's casual and we don't want to waste the time, we just don't up upgrade anything. Now this part is fun, and I know what you're all thinking. That's a lot of psychoplasm on the walls, and you would be right. But yeah, in 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 the speedrun, we don't. Don't upgrade it unless it's like harder difficulties, but the intended thing is either kill it, stealth it, or upgrade Sebastian to the point that he can run for longer than three seconds. I wish I could upgrade to run for longer than three <laughs> seconds. Um, I'm sure we all wish that. <laughs> the, if you upgrade stealth enough, you can literally just like walk, like just crouch past enemies in the game and they just kind of go... What was that? It's like that whole Skyrim thing where you shoot him in the face and then hide, and they're like, oh, it must have been the wind. Um, and you can just, like, stealth kill everything. <laughs> yep. And it just becomes super OP. So this is the Watcher. He is a creature made purely of psychoplasm. Get off the wall, please, Sebastian. But we're going to cover to cover and try and avoid him. He's got these little hands that'll pop up and try and slap us, and we don't want that. That's a good, uh, good room. Sometimes you can get caught on some of the boxes and they, they just kind of get the better of you. But that was good. This will be the first instance where I use the controller for actual aiming, because this part and two other parts in the game, the aim is just really weird. You can have the crosshairs right on his face, but it'll still shoot to the left. Um, so we just use the aim assist there, because it'll just lock right on. And saves me missing half a dozen shots. There is one other time we see the Watcher in the game, but it's in a cutscene, which we skipped, so we don't have to worry about seeing him ever again. I thought this place was supposed to be fucking stable. Coming up now is uh, another safe house. We get to meet uh, Hoffman, who is, who was the Mobius psychologist, and she's really terrible at her job because she lets she's the one that was like, "Hey, Stefano is totally safe and stable enough to be part of Union." Uh, which is the town that we're in. Uh, so thanks, Hoffman. Well, I mean, if we have the world's worst detective, then That's true. maybe. The world's worst psychologist as well. Yeah, maybe. She does come good, though. She does, like, um, help us out a bit. So She's forgiven, but, yeah, like, half of the issues here are her problem. Well, to be fair, I don't think... As mortal, but normal people will be able to cope with uh, half of what's going on. Yeah, that's so. true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, Making so the best of it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So we're going to this this chapter here. There's a lot going on in this chapter. Um, basically, we have to get into the theater by visiting two areas that have these paintings, and the paintings um, will take us into this again. It's like very much like Silent Hill type thing where it'll just change everything around on us. We have to just take out these two sculptures. Um, and it's just... They're fun. There's a lot of a lot of things that can go wrong. Uh, so we're going to try our best. He's fine. He'll see us, but as soon as you run into these bushes here, he's like... Must have been the wind. So these are the two paintings we're looking for in throughout this, this little area. <clears throat> So 
Stefano talks all like angry and stuff to us, saying that we don't appreciate his art. So we're going to show him how much we appreciate his art by uh, destroying it. Try and cover to cover off this wall as much as possible. Now there's two hysterics here. The first one we can generally get by without being seen. She's she's doing her own thing. She doesn't care. But then around the corner here, there is one that is just uh, painful. Pick up these nails. I'm trying like cover about here. Yep, we got that nice little Sebastian slide there, and avoided it completely. So what we just picked up there was like an extra ammo pouch, so it'll just give us more. Um, Looks like the only upgrade we pick up that'll allow us to hold more ammunition. Okay, so we're going in here. And the first painting is just up here. And this is the second instance of Obscura. And the final instance of Obscura. So it's locked us out. We need to go run around this little building and find a key, which is pretty close to where we want to be. Um, we've got to avoid Obscura as much as we can. There are times where she's just right there. Um, but that's usually on the way back. So what we want to do, rather than come back through this one that we came through, we're going to hide over here for just a moment. And that's going to cause her to come around this way. Hopefully that was long enough. And then we're just going to bait and switch. No, we didn't get that. We were a bit too quick to get around there. So what we're going to do now is shoot a shock bolt and hope that she doesn't get us. But you can do that without seeing the obscura at all. <clears throat> that's right, that's the marathon lot coming into play. And this part's pretty monk S2. There's uh, tripwires, electrified barbed wire tripwires uh, that we want to avoid. Because, you know, barbed wire makes everything uh, more violent. We're going to say nuts to that, and we're going to cover to this wall. And we're going to cover to this pole here. And just let Stefano know that his tripwires are a joke. And that's one down. No, not the art. Yeah, it's it's done. Done skis. Destroying that freak's work was actually fair. Actually, that must be really triggering for you. Uh, not not terribly. Not Sometimes terribly. it's cathartic to like just ruin like if, if you're not happy with a piece of yeah, art. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. It's like yep. Okay, and Get now we want to cover to this van here. Bounce off into this van, and we're going to cover to cover because there's a guardian chasing us. We we don't even see her until like um, we come out of that room um, after killing the the second painting. There is a way to get her to just like completely forget we're there, but um, it's pretty tricky. And I've only gotten it like once or twice. But, Going into this, this, uh, this bar here. Picking up that fuse for later. Here's the other one. Now this one is way easier. Um, because you're not dealing with anything overly aggressive. you just got two like normal zombies. And zombies in this have this really weird quirk where they won't attack you right away like they will in the, like Resident Evil games or something like that. They will spot you, scream... Stand there for like a second and then think about attacking you. So you can literally get past them. I think I've had one instance where they've actually attacked me before I've gotten things open. Otherwise they're just sitting there screaming like idiots. So I'm going to pick up this key. And if you need ammo at this point, um, after you pick up this key to the right here on that bench, a like mannequin or something will spawn with ammo sitting on its lap. Okay. 
So that's just sort of blocked us off, so we can't come back the way we came. So we've got to take this uh, this little road down here, little side path, but that's okay. So you see, he kind of ran to me, but then he's just going to stop, and he's just going to look at me for a second. And he hasn't even, like, tried to attack me. Um, I intended covers here. You're not supposed to know that you can cover here to move up faster, but it's a thing. This one's a little trickier, but still, if I um, don't do the wrong cover to cover, we'll be fine. It's this one here, that tripwire is a little lower than it looks, so sometimes I'll just be like, zoom in and just run right into it. Okay, easy clap. And now that fence is just going to disappear, and we can go into the theatre. And uh, find Stefano. I saw. This is a, it's a fun chapter. It's just like, there's a lot to try and sort of remember. Okay, picking that up for safety. This guardian here is going to try and have a swing at us, but we're going to cover to this car. Okay, no, thank you. Covered just about everything on the way here. Just to try and get her to, like, get her far enough away from us that she gives up on chasing us. Which I don't think we did. Yeah, no, she's still on our tail. This part can be a bit yikes too, because you've got all these guys hanging around. They like to swing at you when you least expect it. There we go. I'm going to heal here just to refill my stamina. It's getting a bit low, and then we're going to bounce off these walls a little bit. There's a cover to cover here that we can go to, just to speed things up a bit. Here. Now, she, can, she usually turns around when you get to a certain point in here, but she can actually... Uh, come up to this door and hit you while you're opening the door and deal some damage. So if you if you have low health and you're opening that door, she can just one-shot you. Um, game is prone to crashing going through that door too, so we're lucky we didn't get that crash. This part has some like really crazy surrealist moments that are about to uh, uh, show up. And it's a lot more... It's a, it's a lot scary. It's le less scary than you think it is, is what I'm trying to say. It's uh, They make it out like it's this big, oh my god, this thing is going to just make my life hell, but it's actually quite easy to run past it and um, just make it look like a chump. Just going to wait for Stefano to stop blabbering on before we can open the door. Thank you. So this is where the Arbiter is kind of like, I'm big and scary, but we're going to show him just how uh, unscary he is. If he does spot you, so basically if you're in his sights for a couple of seconds, like more than, than a couple of seconds, he will, it'll show this cutscene of him just like squashing Sebastian and one hit kills. But there's, there's so many obstacles in the way that you can just zoom through. And um, his, his line of sight's not that great when you're hiding behind a tiny rock. So, you know, he does this big angry slap at this bit of wall here. Bang, don't mess with me. But we're going to mess with him. I'm looking at this and thinking with the art theme, whether it would be a, a fun little joke to uh, just set it up to be a little Escher thing so that you run around in circles. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Okay, so that's the only time we really stop for him. Um, if you are brave enough, you can jump down and hope for the best, but yeah, um, I'm not going to risk that. Okay, there's a fuse here that I want to pick up for ammo. Just staying just outside of his line of vision here. Now there's a cover point here that we're going to try and hit. Yep. So that's... Sh he should normally like see you, but for uh, some reason the cover to cover there just kind of he doesn't he doesn't have enough time to hit you. And this part here looks like oh my god I got caught, but no we actually did that part, so that's that part over with. He's easy. All right, where the fuck do you go? 
Sebastian's getting a bit angry, and that's all right. I'm pick up some more resources here, because we are going into the fight with Stefano, which is not the previously mentioned boss fight that I will be donating extra money for if I die, that's later on. Um, basically, we're, just, we're back where we started in that um, same building. He's talking mad crap about what he's going to do to Lily and... Okay, now this boss fight I tend to use the controller more. Just because uh, some sections of it are a bit weird. Um, I didn't get the fast door. You can actually get a fast door there if you stand a certain distance away. Stefano has mostly set spawn points depending on how well you're playing. So if you mess up um so yeah see I, I didn't get that right spawn i must have moved too early so that's just going to throw things out a little bit all right there he is he also has a very large grab i've noticed recently Oh, no, we don't want to get hit for that picture. Ooh. Okay, so we should be close to starting the second phase. He starts to like... Oh, he got me. Cheeky. That's right, I got him. So he's going to go Super Saiyan here. And he's going to call the Arbisher back. But the Arbisher, if you just stay behind walls, won't do anything. I'm going to pop a couple of shots off. Go pick up our shotgun ammo, because we're going to need that. When we come back, he should be where we want him. Yep. Oh, that's new. But that's alright, we uh, we got him. Okay, now he should be here in just a sec, yep. Yeah. Okay, so that's bad. Uh, I was a bit too slow to, uh, to hit him with that shotgun there. Philistine is like the best RNG you want, because he kind of just lunges for you and you just pop him one. You at Stefano. There you are. Okay. So his attacks based on or like linked with his dialogue. Somewhat, yeah. So like Philistine, he's just charging you like that, and he'll try and grab you. Um, sometimes he'll say bleed for me, and he just kind of stands out like a goofball and throws a knife, which you can sort of get up close and um, pop a couple of shots off. Um, but at the moment, he's like just playing. See? Bleed for me, he kind of just stands there. Um. Okay, so this hasn't been my best fight, but that's okay. Okay, so that's Stefano. He's dead now. Um, there is one line specifically that I absolutely love in the Stefano fight, where he says, stop moving, damn it, while he's teleporting all around the arena. It's just, it just makes me laugh every time. Oh yeah, only I may move. Yeah, that's right, yeah. How dare you not stand completely still while I stab you to death. So at that point you'd think, hey, the game's done, the, the, the uh, antagonist is dead, but no. He was just a pawn. Spoiler alert. I'm going to just quickly... Wait, is this where we find out it's the Matrix? Because I, I heard someone spoiled the game for me and said it was the Matrix. Uh, we're already in the Matrix. We, we already know we're in the Matrix. But we work out that there was some other bloke that was controlling Stefano, telling him what to do. And um, Stefano kidnapping Lily was all this other bloke's plan. And now we get introduced to Disciples, who are jerks. They're real jerks, I don't like them. Um, and the game gets less, like, surreal artsy and more just, like, cult. Lots of candles, lots of 
um, you know, spooky symbols and stuff. Um, again, just picking up some more resources here because there's some really monk s parts coming up. Uh, so at the moment, his name is just triple question mark, but he does reveal his name later on. Lots of resources on the way. This part is one of the sections of the game where a small mistake can cost you big time. And it's based off one shot that I have to hit. So if I miss this one shot, uh, it's going to be a big time loss. So I want my regular half in bolts. These two guys we're going to kill here first because they will get up later and they're really annoying to deal with. Okay, it's the first time in about a week that I've hit those guys first try. So we're going to pop shock bot up about there, reload. Now on the way back, we need to hit one specific zombie with the shock bolt. Him. And if I miss that, uh, it's going to be really clutch. Because what's going to happen is when I come out through here, all these prison cells are going to open up and it's just going to be swarming with monsters. And so the shock bolts are basically to buy us time. Because we've got to use that crank for a another section where we're mashing to open the door. And you don't want monsters spotting you while you're doing that. Because uh, it's not a fun time. Okay, we got him. So we're going to switch to the smoke bolt, which is the other buy me time bolt. So because we got him, he's not going to run out here and trigger that shock bolt early. So those guys coming out there are just going to get hit. Smoke bolt's going to keep us in cover for just a little while while we can uh, hopefully get this door open. They may see us, but I think at this point we're uh, pretty safe. Okay, easy clap. I'm going to switch to these bolts just because in a session coming up, uh, it's, it's probably the best weapon to use to take out the enemies. Now this is like the most evil within part of the game. Sebastian's going to like fall. The ladder's going to break. He's going to fall. Right at the last moment, uh, it's going to do this thing where... Um, Sorry, it's this part here. It's this little bit here. It's going to do this thing where he's going to fall back, and at the last moment, gravity's just going to just change on us, and he's not going to die from the impact because uh, video games. <laughs> Protagonists. Yeah, exactly. Just he eats it. He eats it hard, and he's just like, "Oh, that hurt a bit." Okay, so the disciples are, are really bad. They're the path, they're the monsters we're going to fight. Now, there's three of them. Now, disciples are the kind of guys that will either eat a shot to the face and die, or eat a shot to the face and go no you, and then hit you. Um, so we're going to use the harpoon bolts to try and take out their legs and curb stomp them before they can get up. And if all goes to plan, uh, it'll be a very quick process. But uh, disciples deal a lot of damage. I think they're my least favourite enemy of the game just because they're so random in like how they can die. Like I've shot one in the leg and he's died and then I've shot one in the face point blank range with a shotgun and he's just laughed it off. So, bit of, bit of a quirk of this game I suppose. So uh, right now, so this guy's name's Theodore. He's basically just toying with us, just showing us Lily over and over again to get Sebastian all like worked up, um, trying to get us to submit and sort of serve under him. And he's going to do that throughout the rest of the game. Stomp him, uh, I said stomp him, please, Sebastian. 
Maybe not. Okay, so this has gone bad already, as you can tell. Um, oh, bro. Uh, They're friendly. Sorry? They're friendly. Very much so, yep. Yeah. Okay. Ah. But you can see this is this it can go south so quickly. Um just because they're just the way they are. Sebastian's reload is like the worst thing ever. Okay, so that's fine. We lived. <clears throat> Not the end of the world. Nice. In 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 an ideal run, uh, you would just hit their legs first try, and then you'd stomp them on the ground. I think the main issue there was that he was still on fire, so Sebastian couldn't actually stomp on him that first time. So I will actually pick up this health kit. He. Making sure I've got enough ammo for things. You can climb down anytime, Sebastian. Now, we'll pick up these uh, herbs that I was just looking for and thought was further away. So, you just see there, I wasn't paying attention to my stamina, and he's uh, moving pretty slow there. This puzzle's pretty easy. Um, I don't want to mention how long it took for me to figure it out in my first playthrough, but it was longer than it should have been. But it's actually very, very simple. Basically, just want to line up. All these little markings on the uh, on the ground here to form that weird symbol that uh, is used in the game. So from right to left, we want to turn this one right twice. Jump over to this one. Turn it right once. Go over this one. Turn it right twice. Are we seeing a pattern, folks? This is pretty cool. If you don't know what you're doing, it's just like, what the hell's going on? But yeah. And then, this final one, we turn to the right. You guessed it, once. So it's 2 1 2 1. Easy clap. Now we've got, I don't know, 40 seconds of cutscene here. Maybe a little bit less. So if there's anything you want to talk about, go for it. Yep. Uh, I will remind everyone that we are all speedruns. We are a group that runs uh, speedrunning events for, to raise money for charity. So we're raising money this time for Cure Cancer, and they fund early, can early, early career cancer researchers who work across all cancers and all areas of cancer research. If you'd like to donate, you can go to donate.ozspeedruns.com. And uh, for donating, you can both um, nominate incentives uh, so things that you would like to add to our speed run from our uh, wonderful spreadsheet, or uh, or and if you donate at least ten dollars, you'll be entered into some draws for some prizes. Okay. And you can find out about that at uh, I'm going to see whether this prizes command works. <laughs> no, nope. it's streamtember.ozspeedruns.com. Okay. All right. So now we're coming up to the RE4 section of the game, RE Cabin. We also get to meet our new friend, Esmeralda Torres, who is probably my favourite character of the game. She's just super cool. Um, and basically, we just need to kill all the enemies. Nothing nothing too crazy to this section, just if it moves, kill it. I get another section where I'll use um, the controller over the keyboard just because some of these shots from the distance are a bit a bit yikes okay so she's gonna just keep telling you to you know watch your six and that's fine we'll do that um, in a moment they're gonna start spawning from the back of the the room um, The worst part is when she starts shooting at monsters while you're trying to shoot them and you're going for headshots and just misses completely. So he's going to bust through. I'm going to shoot him in the face. Shoot them in the face. Hope for a two far. No. Okay. Sometimes you can plant that shotgun shot and it'll knock both of them down. Uh, 
in which case you just like run through and curb stomp both of them. Okay, so where are you coming in? Okay, you're coming in first. Okay. Kick this barrel over, because in a moment some spawns are going to pop up. And they're the absolute worst, as we've learned. Okay. So Torres will say something like, oh, what's that? And that's that's when we know that the uh, spawn's going to come in. Then as soon as he busts through, we're just going to shoot this uh, fuel on the ground. And that'll just insta-kill him. Bang. No, I said bang. And then another one's going to bust through this window, and we're going to take him out too. Okay. And that's Cabin. Stock up on some ammo. As previously mentioned, there's a bit with lots of downtime. This is one of those times. Um, basically what's going to happen is they're just going to introduce each other. You know, oh, I'm, I'm Torres, I'm Sebastian, I know who you are. Because your wife sent me. Turns out our wife that went missing was uh, working for Mobius. She, she learned that Mobius kidnapped Lily and was like, right, I'm going undercover. I'm going to try and get Lily back. And she formed this whole plan. And this whole couple of minutes is of unskippable dialogue is just her explaining what's going on. Just that Myra, our wife, learned what was going on with Mobius and she formed this plan with Kidman, who's the one that summoned us. Um, would you like to pick up the herb, please? Thank you. And then um, the plan went down the toilet because Theodore betrayed them. Theodore was supposed to be part of the main plan and decided that, hey, I want the power for myself, so screw you guys, I'm going to do what I want. Um, and so, yeah, this whole auto scroll section I guess is just them explaining that so you've got a couple of minutes of uh, time to kill if you want to read any donations or any incentives or I don't know, tell us how your day was I don't, oh, I don't know yeah, yeah lots of downtime in this part so. well um, I will remind everyone to head over to the uh, incentive spreadsheet and maybe pick out an incentive of your choice and consider donating to your cancer. It's a good cause. And uh, yeah, show, show your support for Tim and all the rest of the runners that have been uh, involved in this event. It's been such a good event so far. Oh, like, it's been, I've, I've been hoping to tune in a bit more than I have been, but I had it yeah. on in the background at work yeah, yesterday yeah. and it was, it was pretty cool. Getting to see uh, some of the runs, yeah, and uh, it's always fun, you know, having everyone gather in, gather together for something exactly. like this, and yeah. and like and happening as part of PAX as the broader mm. um, context. I'm hoping to maybe tune into some of those streams as well. Mm. For sure, yeah. The schedule, it's like, oh yeah, maybe I'll maybe actually use this. Like, there's one panel happening tomorrow about LED lights, and I'm like, maybe <laughs> I should use this to. I think it's about using LEDs in cosplay, and I'm like, oh, I've been okay. meaning to like, that's yeah, cool. to fool around with LED lights yeah, forever. Yeah. Maybe that's a good one to tune in on. And one hundred percent, yeah. There's lots of great. I think they're holding lots of like just uh, chat, like you know, turn up and chat events okay, for yeah. people in the in their Discord. So you know, that might be something that you might like to do across mm. this weekend with PAX as well, because yeah, it's not just Oz speed runs happening this weekend. It is PAX Oz. It is correct. Yep. Yeah, so she's just kind of told us what's going on. A um, little bit more. We we got a. There'll be a trigger. You'll 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 know it. Um, I'll actually be able to run. Um, but yeah, so probably another maybe minute. <laughs> but this is this is just like the perfect like um, time to show off Torres. Like she's falling and having a hard time climbing up. Sebastian's like, hey, do you need help? And she's like, no. Well, she didn't. That's right, that's right. She's, she's a badass. <laughs> You're a part of the plan now. I don't know. I don't know if I like how ominously they capitalize the, the plan there in that dialogue. The plan, yeah. It's like... 
With all of the, uh, you know, creeps and cultists have been trying to That's right, get at yeah. us. I don't know if I want to also yeah. be part of the plan. The plan, yeah. Yeah, so Father Theodore, he actually, before joining Mobius, was like a motivational speaker who then, I believe, formed some kind of cult, like, in, in the real world, and then they hired him to kind of convince people to join the... Um, the program to become citizens of union so he was able to use his like cult leader status and ability to like just talk out his butt to to convince these people to submit their consciousness to a, a matrix realm and uh that was that was how it all sort of started okay so here is where i can sort of do things again uh this part's pretty hit or miss and it's complete rng uh, we're going to be introduced to another boss, which I'm going to skip, so you probably won't even see him for that long. Um, he's got disciples running around everywhere, and we're going to try and... We're trying to get to um, Torres' safe house, which is where that little little flag is that you'll see in the distance there. We're going to run past a few of them, shoot a, a smoke bolt, and hope to God that we get the good Torres RNG, because Torres can either just zip past them, or she'll just engage with every single one of them. And that is, that is complete RNG. We're, we're aiming for that little flag there. Okay. I'll take the lead. Stay low and keep behind me. Right. We'll listen. So I'm going to try and hit some cover points to uh, get past them quicker. Which I don't think we did. No, nope. so we've been seen, which is fine. We can still do this. Um, so I'm going to shoot the shock bar about here, and then we're going to run to the left of this truck through these bushes. And that's just going to make it a lot harder for those disciples to see me. Now, I don't know whether it's there's a specific trigger there or something, but usually if you go through there, Taurus will kind of teleport. She'll just immediately be, like, really close. Um, so far, it looks good, but there have been times where she's been almost at this gate here and she's just decided to turn around. Yep, she's zooming. She's zooming! This is what we want. This is good. You're all right, Taurus. You can come back. And she's going to sit there and complain that it wasn't as stealthy as it could have been, but in saying that, uh, if you kill all the enemies before she even spots one, she will also go, oh, there was no enemies. So, that's just what it is, I guess. So yeah, that can, that can go south very quickly. Sometimes Toros go, oh, something's moving, I'm going to shoot it. And then you have to run all the way back. And there's about six, I think, in total. Six of those disciples, so you kind of... And you've seen how difficult they can be to deal with sometimes, so... Uh, it can be really bad. A bit more of like... We're basically just updating Kidman now. And what's going on, they're like, Oh, we've killed Stefano, we've worked out what Theodore's up to. Better let Kidman know what's going on. And so he's going to give her a ring in just a sec. Find Stefano immediately skip dialogue. Okay, so now he's going to try and contact O'Neill, who was that uh, coward that we met back in Chapter 3, but he's not responding. We don't know what's going on. So we're like, oh, that's that's bad. We better try and find him. Because nothing could possibly have gone wrong. Okay, this camera's a bit wonky too. We're going to pick up the first instance of the freeze bolts, which are really only handy in two parts of the run, unless I'm absolutely desperate. Got some more. Sebastian's doing his somersaults there. That's always fun. This is going to take us back into the marrow to where Hoffman's safe house is. Because he's like, oh, I better go and find O'Neill. So we're kind of backtracking. This is uh, one of the hardest fuse box puzzles you'll ever see in any game ever. There's literally one, two, three, four. 
And I just proved how hard it is because you can be going too fast and just completely muff, like, muff it up. But that's alright. So, we are going to prepare for the next section by crafting some stuff. Okay. So as you can see, there's all these candles and stuff that weren't here before. So, that implies something has happened. No, the candles just turned up on their own. <laughs> Hoffman was like, no, nah, I need a bit of mood lighting. So, residents here of Hoffman, who's talking to Anil, and Anil's like, hey, you should totally come to this area of the Marrow that I've never been to before. Because nothing could possibly go wrong. Now we're going to this like little like lab facility thing, which if you read the files in the game, which I didn't, I actually actually had to Google it. Um, basically, some the 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 lost, which are the monsters in here, became the lost because of the combined consciousness was just like messing with everyone's memories and stuff like that, and it ended up just mutating them into what they are. And so they were using this lab here to experiment on the the lost to try and work out what the hell was going on. Um, totally not Resident Evil at all. I've got the right bolts equipped. Okay, I'm going to come up with another little like cutscene resonance thing here that we're going to trigger and then immediately run the opposite way because we don't care. Now it's telling us we need like you need a, a cerebral chip to be able to get through the door that Hoffman went through. And we don't have one of those, so we're gonna go find one. Wonder where a cerebral chip could be found. Are you gonna have to also install it? No, thankfully. <laughs> just walk around with this brain yeah, chip. Just, yeah, just put it in your back pocket, you'll be fine. Uh, this is not nearly as monk S as what Sebastian has to do in the first game, but still pretty yikes. Um, just drill into the head, easy extraction, no dramas. Painless. Now we're trying to work out a way to skip this door before it triggers the little like power outage, but we haven't worked that out yet. But it'll be a great day when we do. It, so I'm gonna try and kick that in, but yeah. the power's gone out, so that means something's coming. And I just glitched. Ha! Huh. Actually, where did we land? No, that's fine. Okay, we're good. I almost had to load then. Um, I actually glitched through the ceiling doing that the other day, and actually had to reload my game. It was pretty bad. But that was that was an alright glitch. We didn't didn't soft lock, thankfully. Um, there's a lot of a lot of bugs in this run because we actually have to run on the the release patch, so we have to down patch the run um, to get the load remover to work, which also doesn't work properly anyway. So there is that. Okay, so we we shock bolt that lament there just because we don't want her screaming at us and you know ruining our. Uh, Stamina. Now I ask everyone in chat to cross their fingers because this is the boss fight I was talking about before. And in fact, I'm actually going to craft another shock bot just to be uh, just to be safe. So if I die in this fight, I'm going to donate twenty dollars just to punish myself from playing like trash. O'Neill, by the way, guys, this is actually O'Neill. He's turned evil. Uh, so what does that do for the plan? Well, the plan's pretty well rooted at the moment. He's just easily led and stuff, but he uh, he wasn't necessarily a big part of the plan anyway. He was just some random engineer, so that's a good first phase. Now we're just going to switch to our explosive bolts here. Hope we don't get hit by the, uh, the flames here, because it can really cause some issues. Yep, we're good. This is a very simple fight, in theory, until you realise that um, O'Neill can sometimes just not take damage. 
well, see, we just got hit by the, the um, flames there. So a bit too close. Uh, and that's O'Neill. Um, easy fight if you do it right. That was, in fact, that was a near perfect O'Neill. This is a very simple, simple concept. Just um, shock him so that he's stunned a bit. Unload two clips of ammo, and then you just want to unload the uh, the bolts on him. Let's check in my inventory here. I may need to craft another of these. Just this part coming up is another section where if you mess up a little bit, it costs you. So we're just gonna make sure we've got sufficient ammunition. Um, this is. This part's pretty simple, it's straightforward, but you can easily get lost if you don't know the path. Um, which, funnily enough, the path is pretty linear. It's just because it's such an open area, you can see something that catches your eye and go, Ooh! Ooh, what's that? And then you're like, okay, well, where the hell am I now? So, um, but yeah, otherwise it's a pretty straightforward section. It just looks really spooky because there's, you know, you're ankle deep in blood and there's monsters and candles and all kinds of stuff going on. Toros has one of the cheesiest lines coming up soon, um, which I actually don't believe that anyone thought that it was a great line to put into a video game of, of this sort of style. So Toros is like, all right, I'm going to go see what uh, O'Neill was working on. Catch ya. And here is the cheesiest line in the video game. Like 80s action movie much? <laughs> Are you okay, Torres? Torres? Now Theodore's gonna mess with us, he's gonna throw us into the, uh, the Slayer album cover that I was just talking about. I'm gonna be using the the, uh, the aim running here just just because it's like um, we stop a fair bit, and so it doesn't matter so much, and it just helps to conserve stamina as much as possible. Um, there's a very specific set of movements that I want to do coming up. So I'm gonna refill my health and stamina here. I'm gonna shoot her and hope that she dies. Um, she didn't, but that's okay. Now we want to trigger this glutton. The gluttons, uh, they will explode. Okay, and we've shocked them, and now we want to just kind of... Oh, that's not the right bolt. So we just messed up a little bit, but that's okay. Get wrecked. Okay, shoot that. Much like before, we're going to try and get this open before any monsters spot us. Um, there's not as many in this area as the previous section when we had to do this, but enough to be a pain. Um, but that's fine, we got through it. Didn't even get grabbed, look at that. Um, it just means I'm short one freeze bolt for later, but that's alright. I think I picked up a condenser somewhere, so we'll be able to craft one. Now we're running to this door here, and it's going to trigger a little cutscene with another one of Lily's dolls. As you can see, it's like the, uh, what was her bedroom. This is the part of this chapter that's probably the easiest to get lost in. Um, just because everything kind of looks the same. So I've got two visual cues that I, I set up for when I start running. Um, and it just kind of keeps me on the right path. So this little light here, and then you'll see another little sort of orangey square just to the right of that, and we're aiming for that right square. And that'll put us in the direction we need to go. It's, we're pretty much running in a straight line. There's a bunch of spawns running around. They're usually not too big of a deal unless you are getting lost. Um, and so we're just going to cover to cover off these weird contraption things. I'm not sure what they're for. But, um, yeah, we just, once we've got that path, we're just using these to 
conserve stamina. And then we're going to cover to cover off this wall. And then down this uh, staircase here. And that's, uh, that's the hard part done. Again, this is just Theodore messing with us, like, putting on a Lily voice, making it sound like she's angry at Dad for, you know, not saving her from a house fire that didn't even happen, that he wasn't even there for, you know? This is where Theodore starts talking, like, real tough to, like, hey, you want to go? Let's go. Uh, but we're going to find out very soon that he doesn't want to go at all. Talks big. He's all bark. And there's going to be this whole big thing that we've just skipped, but basically what's happened is uh, Sebastian's kindly work, finally worked up the courage to have a shot at uh, Theodore, but he does a whole big debate, and it turns out that we didn't shoot Theodore, we shot Torres. And so Torres, wounded, is trying to get us out of here to a safe place. And as you can see now, she's uh, having a bit of a rough go of it. She's just kind of giving some motivational speech here, telling us that we need to, like, not fall for his crap, and we need to, we need to just, you know... Uh, you know, just just get get it done, you know. You gotta give that silly bitch some payback. Sebastian? And then what's this? We're in our old house. You've been working too hard. It's making you delirious. Myra. This part's pretty straightforward. We just run down the stairs and we find a little note that Myra left. It was the last letter that Myra left for us before she disappeared. Which we now can make sense of because we know what the hell's going on. How did I... There's a neat little uh, glitch that it's not a like a. The glitch is not used to skip any time. It is just a really funny glitch that I want to try and show off if the camera angle will let me. But I'll call that out in just a moment. Really? But yeah, just for now, we're just running down the stairs, going into the kitchen. Here's the letter. Myra's last communication. It was hidden in her file. It sounded so crazy at the time. I should have believed her. My dearest, what a wonderful letter. Now, if you look at the communicator on Sebastian's uh, hip here, it's at a weird angle. And then when we gain control, whoop, it's back up. <laughs> Completely useless, but it's fun. You're alright, that's cute. Not sure what causes it. I, I, it's, it happens in a casual playthrough too. Like, it's not like I'm doing anything specific to cause the glitch to happen. Um, Hoffman's now yelling at us to wake up. Because we've been sleeping in a very, very comfortable position. For God only knows how long. And this is another section where we've got a couple of minutes of downtime. Basically, what's going to happen is we learn that Torres has died. Sebastian, who has now twice been told to just forget anything Theodore says and just, just you know, it's not your fault, nothing's your fault, sees Torres dead, goes, oh no, I killed her, and then completely does a 180 and is like, oh no, it's all my fault again, where, where, where. And then it's Hoffman that goes, hey man, don't let him do this to you. And he goes, you're right. And then that's it, he's like... He's all tough after that. So if you've got anything that you need to read out, now is probably the best time to do it. All right. Well, I will uh, remind everyone once again uh, that we have some incentives coming up. So we have uh, the next uh, incentive is a couple of runs after, or like the third run after this, I think, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. And... We can force the runner to run all events gold medals with motion control, so we need another $395 for that. Um, if you would like to donate, you can head to donate.ozspeedruns.com. And don't let him do this to you. 
make sure to put a note in your comment about where you would like your donation to go towards. And of course, um, all of the money that we're raising for this event is going to go to Cure Cancer. Pretty good cause. And you also are entered into some draws for spiffy prizes. I think those prizes are only for Australians. But um, we do uh, appreciate your donations from all over the globe regardless. Yeah, so basically this formed a plan. Um, Hoffman's like, hey, I found like a weird thing in uh, Neil's stash of gadgets that I'm going to fiddle around with. Meet me at that same pub where we destroyed one of those, um, what are they called, art pieces. I'll pick up this condenser here just to be safe. And I picked up some shotgun ammo for safety. <clears throat> so we're going to meet her at this thing and there's uh, quite a bit going on here. We're going to pick up the sniper rifle um, in just a moment, which is... In this run, um, once you pick it up, it is like the most overpowered weapon you can possibly want. Like up to this point, the, the bolts have been like, you know, pretty powerful. Like we saw how quickly the explosive bolts put down O'Neill. But the sniper rifle is next level. Um, even, at, even at base power, it's ridiculous what you can do with it. So I'm just going to pick up a whole bunch of resources. And you'll notice we were here earlier. We were in this area earlier, but... It's, uh, it's changed a little bit since we were last here. It's a lot more red. And, oh yeah, there's a, like a tower there too. Probably should mention that. Okay, so now we're going to climb up this ladder on this building, which is where the sniper is, and hope the Harbingers... So Harbingers are basically weaker versions of... Uh, what O'Neill became. So they walk around, they've got the flamethrowers and stuff, and they can really ruin your day if you let them. So we're going to try and avoid them as much as possible. Pick up our sniper. Now we're going to shoot a, a smoke bolt at this glutton here, just so that he doesn't blow up on us. Um, yeah. and we're going to run back around the same route we took going to um, like past those hysterics, except they're replaced now by gluttons and disciples. Yay, go us. Oh, that's probably bad. No, we're good. Um, I have this tendency to get hit by the explosion there, so that was good that we didn't get that. Fun fact, I've clipped through the wall there before, coming down. Um, there's nothing inside, it's just, it's just an empty box. That's when you when you need some downtime. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just want to just want to <laughs> chill for a few minutes and just can't can't exit. You're, you're stuck, so that's always fun. But yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I can't, the, the first time it happened, I kind of wish I was recording it just because it was like so random. Nowhere near the wall, jumping down off that box, he just clips through. It's just like oh, that's a thing. All right, so yeah, this is like a portable, uh, stable field, a mid up, I guess you would call it. Um, but, because it's janky, and it's not fully um, developed, Hoffman needs to carry it uh, in case it breaks down. So this is kind of a little auto-scroll section. Um, uh, Disciples is going to sort of spawn in mostly set. I think it's set, but there are some days where it's just like, wait, where did you come from? Um, but basically, yeah, we just have to keep Hoffman from dying, essentially. Because um, they'll, they'll definitely like to slap a one. There's no real trick to it. We just got to wait for them to spawn. They'll kind of, they've got a little bit of iframe when they come out of the ground and, and are spawning. So we just got to wait for them to come out of that like invincibility period and then just try and put them down as quickly as they can. But Hoffman being the absolute legend that she is will also give us ammunition as needed. So if we sort of play a bit crap, it doesn't matter so much because she's just going to give us ammo anyway. So here's our first disciple popping up now. He's come out of his uh, invincibility there. So... I believe the second one is behind us. Or it could be made to be a liar, but I'm pretty sure. If there's any incentives or anything you want to talk about, you're more than welcome to. This is yeah. pretty... Um, so as you can see, I just shot a bit too early there, so we kind of just... The bullets did nothing. But yeah, if you've got anything you want to talk about, go for it. Well, after Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, there's also Jack and Dexter, the Precursor Legacy, where we can uh, put our money towards playing the game in Japanese. 
there is uh, for Peter Jackson's King Kong, the official game of the movie, we can decide whether to save Kong or leave him to a uh, not so great fate. Um, there's also in Super Mario World, after the race, um, after in the donuts, there is an in the s in a six race. Um, so I guess uh, if you want to see just more racing action, we can put some money towards that one. If you want to name the protagonists of the Fire Emblem Three Houses runs, you can uh, donate towards naming Byleth. So there will be two names selected. And we have That's language great. and... Oh. Sorry, I was just thinking out loud. <laughs> got zombies. Yeah. They're coming for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've got Super Monkey Ball, language and monkey choice for that game. We can rescue Cindy in River City Ransom. We can save or harvest the little sister in Bioshock. And we can uh, uh, set the file name in Code Lyoko and add a bonus not just a bonus game, but a bonus run, uh, race at the very end of Marathon, I think. Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, defeat Ganon in the in a no SRM run. I don't know if you saw that, but one of those disciples full just had enough and was turning around to walk away. That's that's a very rare thing to happen. I shot him in the arm and he went, nah, I'm good, and just turned around. <laughs> so is it really worth it? Yeah, Yeah, do I really want to deal with this? He's already put down eight of my bros. <laughs> yeah, so it's a little bit longer. There's, this is probably the second phase of the um, the section. It's very much just auto scroll. This is where I kind of lose track of the spawns a bit because um, it's just it's difficult to see. Well, I think he's probably going to pop up behind us next. No, maybe. This this part can be really difficult um, when you don't know their sort of patterns as well. It's one of those things where like you hear a roar and go, "Oh crap, where'd that come from?" And then it's by that point they're already in the fire and they're having a go at you. So yes, that's gonna break down a couple of times. And that's how we know that. Okay, I think you're first, maybe. We'll be right. Okay. Him out. This may be the last guy. It's usually this guy that spawns last. Okay. That's nice. it. Alright. So, it fails. Uh, that uh, emitter. They try and gun it to this church. And Hoffman gets tackled by some disciples. And she's now dead. So, F in the chat for Hoffman. Actually heal here just for safety too. So we'll get yikes in this section coming up. A few bits and pieces going on in this one. It's not super crazy. It's mostly just like pulling switches and avoiding being hit by things. Um, lots of stair skating because uh, you know stronghold. But I will be picking up a whole bunch of resources too, just for like extra safety in parts. Because um, we need all the resources we can for um, the final boss. So we're just kind of preparing for that now. He does, he does a bunch of those too, where it'll like go from a normal staircase to this like heavenly, I suppose, infinite staircase. Or he's just, again, just talking in your ear about. God knows what. This is another room that in a casual playthrough can get really con like confusing. And your natural instinct would be like, okay, I need to take out every single enemy in this room. But we're not going to do that. We're going to try and kill only one. And that's just because he's in our way. So, you know, they make it pretty obvious where you need to go. Um, so we're going to break out a cover here. And we're going to run down this way. Little door here that we want to 
We've got a rundown. Say, so catch your mate to him. And then this guy coming up around the corner is the guy we need to focus on. Because if we don't kill him, much like earlier in the game, they can actually um, hit us during the cutscene. So the cutscene here, where we're actually opening this gate, he can just get right up on you, just like hitting you, hitting you around. And you'll, you'll more likely than not die. It's happened to me in numerous runs. So I always try for a double tap on that guy. And we don't want that cover. We do want this cover. He can sometimes turbo and just get right on you like that. Didn't even let me like finish my sentence before he proved it. Um, he can be right up your butt too. We don't want that. And then that's that part done. I'm now going to bind my sniper rifle. And I'm going to craft as many sniper cartridges as the game will let me at the moment. Grab an extra shock bolt. Grab an extra one of these. So again, it's just going to do this whole, like, you know, oh... Now, at this point, he's basically just like, Hey, man, how about you just join me? Just let's let's not fight. Just join me. And we can take over the world. And Sebastian's like, no. Um, he's even, like, at this point, threatening to kill Lily and Myra in front of him if he doesn't, like, join him and stuff. It's uh, pretty yikes. I'm going to pick up some of these more resources. Normally I wouldn't pick these up in, um, in PB attempts for the game. I'm trying to be safe here. Okay. There's another room here that we normally wouldn't enter unless we wanted to get resources. There's also a mirror in that next room if we wanted to upgrade things, but we're going to not worry about that. Now, coming up here, if we don't have enough handgun ammo, see, so we're, we're fine for handgun ammo, but if we don't have enough ammo, when we hit this trigger, ammo will actually literally just drop from the ceiling. There's no, like, hey, how do we make this look cool? It's just drop the ammo from the ceiling, yeah? So, just that missed completely, so that's a big yikes. Um, let's... He's our biggest problem. I don't mind if he hits me, but... Now we want to just hit this. Um, I shot too early. That that um, container there will freeze it for the enemies. Okay. Another difficult shot. This next room is a bit, a bit rubbish too. you got to pull a lever and the gate's timed. So they open one by one while you've got three spawns in the same room as you. Um, so we've got to try and take as little damage as possible in this room. That's really the only way around it. So that closes. That one's going to shut, but then these other gates, it will open again, but yeah, they're all on timers. And so we're basically just running out the clock at this point in time, just making sure that we don't die. You don't have to kill this guy, but... You know, we got some time. We got that shock bolt. Got this. I'm gonna switch to my other smoke bolt and shoot that and hope that it works, which he kind of just uh, got better of me sooner than I would have liked. But yeah, at this point we're just trying to avoid being hit. There we go. Now we want to just leg it up here. He can hit me. Nope, we got it. Good. They're very... Very quick to hit. So if you're just near a trigger and you think you're safe, they'll just one last little slap just to let you know that you're still immortal. Okay. And what's going to happen now is... This is where uh, Theodore is very much like... Oh, uh, you know, you have no choice but to fight me now. We're gonna, we're gonna throw down, and then proceeds to throw three enemies in a boss rush from the first game at you. So we're gonna go in this room. We're gonna pick up a couple little supplies, and then it'll be this little mini boss rush. So if anyone who really liked some of the monsters in the first game, this is the fan service.
I love a good ominous, like, elevator. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like... Yeah, even within, like, Silent Hill and stuff are really good for that. So I can pick that up. I don't think I need this fuse, but we're going to get it anyway, because it's on the ground. Okay, get this cutscene. First up is the Sadist, who was the very first, uh, like, main boss that you encounter in the first Evil Within. Um, which had me on edge so much when I first played it. It was, uh, it was, I, I hid in a locker for about 10 minutes, let's just say that. This, this whole section kind of indicates, like, Sebastian is just overcoming his demons. Like, right here is the point where he goes, I've had enough of this, let's just, let's just get it over with. And so rather than running, he decides he's gonna be, like, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger and just wreck everyone. This section here is very, uh, Evil Dead. In that, the chainsaw and the, the amount of blood that's about to, uh, shower Sebastian. Not this time. It's a good time. Big action movie thing where he just pulls a knife out without even, like, worrying what's going on. Controller vibrates like crazy here. Apologies. I'd say he's just going to try and stop us with his machete, but, you know, chainsaw beats machete. And that's the sadist. Now we get to meet everyone's favorite pyramid head, pyramid head clone, the Keeper, who is not a pain in the butt at all. He goes down pretty easy with the sniper rifle, but if you, it's because they're quite narrow corridors, you can like just get hit um, if you're not careful. Also, sometimes I think the game just doesn't register hitboxes and will shoot through them. That so he's kind of got me. So we're gonna shoot him, and then two more are gonna spawn right now. So we're gonna pick up, I'm gonna reload as quickly as I can. And he's gonna be right there. Their spawns are also based on positioning, I believe, too. So, um, so if I'm like in a different area of the of the the arena, a different one will spawn. So I'm basically running that path to try and keep the spawns as consistent as possible. But that's that's the keepers done, and now um, everyone's favorite uh, little sister Laura. And she's pretty easy. We just need to activate some like um, we're gonna turn some vows to get the fire going because fire is her weak point. If we had the flamethrower, we could kill her with the flamethrower, but the flamethrower takes too long to get in the game. So we don't worry about it. So we're just gonna have some strategically placed shock bolts. And that's gonna buy us some time. Buy me time bolts. Her spawns can be random too. Um, sometimes you can keep them like fairly consistent, but she does have a mind of her own sometimes. Do the second one. So she's spawning from there, so I'm going to go around to the right-hand side, pick up that shock bolt that I just dropped. So we won't need that. But that will also put her... right where we want her. And we just activate this switch. GG's, that's Laura. And that's the whole boss rush. Just done. That was, very, that was a pretty good section. And what that does is plays this whole cutscene where Myra comes into it. So Myra is actually the cause of all this psychoplasm. Spoiler alert. And she's decided that she wants power in STEM to be able to protect Lily. So she actually is the one that kills Theodore. And then turns the whole world into this weird limbo ash filled kind of thing. It's kind of kind of messed up. Um, and so now we're just basically trying to track down Myra 
to try and reason with her to let us uh, take Lily back to the real world. And she's not having a bar of it. So this was um, Theodore's stronghold. Emphasis on was. I may heal here too, just for safety. Because um, we're, we're coming up to some monsters now that are... They're very similar to the, the Disciples, in that they can sort of just completely disregard a shot to the face. Um, so I'd rather as much health as possible going into this part. Yeah, so we're, we're basically she's just... You know, she's walking along and we're just trying to find her as much as possible while everything's breaking around us. Symbolic of their marriage? I don't know. Probably not. And so you will see these guys spawn. They're, they're kind of... Yeah, they're very much similar as the disciples. They're a bit smaller, but... They're like dried psychoplasm. I think they're supposed to be made out of. Which is why they're all cracked and they look like rock and stuff. But they're a lot quicker than disciples too. Okay. No real strat, we just kind of want to... Um, see that, he just shot through him. Oh, that's bad. Okay, so I'm going to take this guy out, and I'll probably have to backtrack to pick up some of those Harpoon Balls, because they come in handy in the next second. Okay, yep, that got him. So that wasn't too bad. We only, like, shot through him twice, instead of, like, six times, is what usually happens. Um, game has some very weird hitboxes at times. Alright, so we're full on Harpoon Balls, so that's a good sign. And I'm going to try and stealth kill as many of these guys as possible. Um... Because once they sort of find us, it's a bit harder. The harpoon bolt takes way too long to like line up, unless you upgrade it. So if all goes to plan, we're going to take out this guy. He takes a little bit of time to unfreeze, so we're going to try and pop him in the head before he starts moving. Yeah, that's one. Okay, so he didn't die, so that's not great. Okay. Okay, there's probably one more bloke hanging around, because we haven't got that cutscene. What's that? Yeah, we'll pick that up too. He'll be here somewhere. Where is he? He's the... Ideally, you want to use that um, barrel that I accidentally blew up to blow him up. But that's alright. We're fine. Now we're coming up to another really cool monster. Um, he's kind of a walking lamppost. But, again, sniper rifle is OP. Wrecks him pretty quickly. I think on a bad fight, it takes you about six shots. Maybe seven if you're really bad. Um, sometimes I put him down in four. And uh, we're basically aiming for that gloving spot. Go figure. Video games. It's always nice to have a good weak point. That's right, like. yeah. An obvious weak point. Um, so I'm going to just run around here real quick to pick up the sniper cartridges. Where are you, bro? Okay. Okay. So that's him done. And that's going to put us in the final stretch of the run. Got this little chapter coming up where we, uh, a lot of walking. This part's kind of frustrating in a run because uh, you think you're on really good time save, but Sebastian just doesn't stop talking. So you're expecting a big fat gold and then it's like you're waiting for 15 seconds before he shuts up and then it's like, oh, it's actually not that big of a time save. Because he just, he's kind of trotting along here and then he starts talking and you're like, come on bro, like, you know, we're we're not far from the end. You need to you need to get a move on. He's been through a lot. He has to process it. Well, know? that's true, but I'm on a time frame here, man. <laughs> you can talk to his therapist when he's done for all I can. Okay, but he doesn't have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so 
So we're gonna craft that. That's not great. Um, we might actually go into the room there and see if there's something we can pick up. Um, we want three. We can get by with just the two uh, um, explosive bolts in this fight, but we really want three for like safety. Actually, screw it. We're just gonna do it with what we got. So I'm gonna heal here just to refill some stamina. It's a long walk. Um, you're going to see me doing a lot of aim running this part. Just because, uh, again, we're trying to conserve as much stamina as possible. Because my health is full now, I can't actually heal to fill stamina. Even if that's all I want, the health bar is full, the game will say no. So it's all on my uh, stamina management now. So this whole chapter here is literally just finding out how things went south. And that is that, you know, they, they got Lily safe, and then Theodore was like, Haha! I want Lily! And then that's how everything just sort of went down the toilet. And that's all these little resonances here are doing. They're just sort of telling us that the original plan was for Myra to rescue Lily and become the core herself so she can take down Mobius. Which is where she ended up getting all of her powers and stuff. And let me check that I've reloaded everything. Last thing we wanted to go into fight with no ammo in our clip. And this fight with Myra, uh, spoilers, she's the final boss, um, it's pretty straightforward. Basically, if it glows, we shoot it. But there's little little phases, so different things will be like illuminated at different times. So the first phase, we just want to shoot the glowing spot on her stomach. The second phase is the, the shoulders, and then the third phase will be shoot her in the face. So uh, Myra got a haircut, which is why she looks a little bit different. So that might have been a little bit too late, so she might not get the animation that I want. So we wanted that animation sooner, but that's okay. Oh, that missed. Okay. Okay, now we want to try and time this shot as well. Okay, that was an okay first phase. So we're going to shoot this bolt here because she's going to spawn these little spider things. I'm going to freeze them. I'm going to stomp as many as we can because they drop precious, precious resources. But we'll need to like craft ammo and stuff throughout this fight. That stomp animation is very satisfying. It's it's great. I love it. Okay, so now we want to switch. Oh, they just throw themselves at you as well. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they just like kamikaze it. <laughs> yeah, it's great. So these shots here are pretty yikes, because she sways a lot, and her hitboxes are gross, but that's okay, we got it. Very easy to miss those shots. So now this arm's going to be like, how dare you? And it's going to grab us, and we're going to use, I trust the aim assist, because this is another section where aiming sucks. You know, this, this third phase here is a lot harder to hit because she's moving in a weird way. She grows this weird like tail thing. Um, and just her movement is a bit off, so you kinda gotta wait for her to position to be able to um, to shoot that, that spot on her. Uh, take the time here to... If I had that extra explosive bolt, I would be using that. See, I missed that, that was on me though. Okay, so... Not good. That's alright. So we have to hit her three times, I believe, with the sniper rifle. So he's got these little uh, hands popping back up. They're not great. Okay. And eventually she's going to give us the opportunity to shoot her again. This phase is all about waiting, it's, uh, and if you miss those first couple of shots, you're just waiting a lot longer and can lose some serious time. Uh, but we're usually pretty safe in this corner until she spawns the hands. Okay. Okay. 
Myra, please. As you can see, it's very easy to miss. Okay, so I'm gonna wait for her to slap the ground and then try shooting it. Okay, that's two. Okay, so that's fine. Now we just need to shoot her in the face once and not get hit by those uh, little guys. So we're gonna try and stomp as many as we can before she gets up. Um, there's actually a glitch that you get penalized for in the run. If you take damage when you hit this final shot, it's I hit the reload button at the worst possible time. Um, actually pauses the timer for like the rest of the whole. There we go. That's Myra done. Easy, somewhat peasy. Um, yeah, it'll actually pause the timer until you reach the house up here, and it's like 30 seconds of time loss that you get penalized for. Some weird bug. So, now we're going to the house. So there's a cutscene where Myra comes to her senses and goes, "All right, you take her. I'll I'll meet you at the house." She's totally not planning to like do a 180 on us and stay behind anyway. Um, so at the moment we're just running to go get Lily, and then it's going to cut to a. We're going to get to play as Julie Kidman for all of a minute. Okay, and this is the other instance where auto aim is your friend because this is the worst section for aiming in the whole game. Uh, there have been times where I've got the, the crosshair line on a dude's face and it just misses completely. Like, nowhere near him. Now it does this really cool, like, action movie thing where it's going to switch between Kidman and, um, Sebastian. Nice little transition. This is the only time you're ever allowed to run in a house. Okay. Right. Back to Kidman. These guys can be a bit annoying sometimes. Like this bloke here just doesn't want to play ball today by the looks of it. Okay. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. So we learned that Kidman was working with Myra and she's finally turned around and she's like, all right, now's the time to take down Mobius. And so she basically, she's running to the, the main room now to try and pull Sebastian out. Because uh, the administrator who's the big bad guy is like, Kill him. Kill yeah. <laughs> uh, him. Yeah, I mean, this is a pretty cool sequence. Um, quickly, uh, I just also want to say, uh, come join us in the All Speed Runs Discord. So I'm going to drop the link in the chat. If you're enjoying the runs or the runners, or just want to get into speed running, then come hang out. Come hang out with us. Right, so this is the this is the little home stretch. This is just a, a straight run. I say straight, but things are falling around us, but um, time's coming up very soon. Um, so I'll count that down for you when that happens. Cool. So we're just, we're just running to that light there. There's this big dramatic scene where, you know, Sebastian's oh protecting Lily while the whole world is falling apart around him. Very hard to uh, to stuff this part up. Don't jinx it. <laughs> there's there's no way you can unless you get some random glitch and fall through the floor. You're pretty good. I just keep hearing you say things that are, that are going to jinx it. Yeah, yeah. You just he'll just launch over the over the, the mountainside there <laughs> just randomly. Alright, so time is in three, two. One time. Nice. That was the Evil Within 2. Good run. Thank you. Oh, and there's this whole little like post credit scene where like STEM comes back online and they're like, hey, maybe Evil Within 3, but probably not. So 218's pretty good considering some of the, the mistakes I made in that run. It's um, Nice. Yeah, it's very good. Very happy with that. Well, yeah, that's I suppose that's it from me. Um, I might say a few thank yous and then I'll I'll, uh, I'll pass it over to someone else. So thank you, Ali, for commenting or hosting my run. I should say I really appreciate it. Um, thanks to Pax and Old Speed Friends for letting me play this game. I only I've only been running this game for like four months, so I'm pretty new to it. Um, and yeah, if you guys like this run or you know just want to like go into even within a bit more. There's a Discord for it, and we would love some more people. The game is still like it's quite a, it's quite a small community, so we're just we're, you know, 
Try and expand it as much as possible. And it is an absolutely brilliant run. The only issues so far is the the load remover. That's the only problem we're having. It's just stopping at times where it's not meant to be. But yeah, if you guys want to want to dive into this run a bit more, there's uh, lots of helpful people. So, yep, yeah, that's going to be it for me, guys. Thank you very much. And an absolute blast.